What's going on guys? Today I'm converting my daughter's car's AC system from R12 to R134. Let's see if I can do this without just completely grenading a compressor. All right, so making this R12 to R134 on Project Ruby here, my daughter's 93 Dodge Shadow, isn't gonna be a real how-to. I mean, I've never done it, so I'm going off what I found on YouTube. Let's see how hard or easy this really is, how much it's really involved. Let's see if you can really do it just by watching YouTube videos. All right, so hopefully the fan noise in the background isn't too bad. It's hot as hell out here. I'll try to edit it out. Hopefully I'll be able to. So the first thing you wanna do is install a new dryer. Um, on this Dodge Shadow, the dryer actually lives right inside the, the fender well here, right behind the headlight. I've already got it unbolted and everything. It's all ready to come out. It's right here. So this one, that's the old one. This one even says it's four. Maybe I can focus on that. It says 134 on it. Hope I can get the light right. There you go. So I'm gonna bolt this up, take these little covers off, reconnect the lines, and then that part will be done. Anyway, ooh, that pulled the whole stud. Um, so this whole system has already been uh, non-functional. It's been dry. There's no there's no refrigerant in here. So um, like I said, this isn't gonna be a how-to. This is gonna be kind of a quick down and dirty, what I you know, have found out by watching YouTube. Supposedly, you don't need to necessar necessarily replace the mineral oil in the system. Um, I'm just gonna be using ester oil rather than PAG. Um, supposedly, if PAG and mineral oil don't play well together, and the mineral oil can cause the PAG to kind of like gum up, I guess. I guess, and supposedly ester oil doesn't have that problem. So that's what I'm gonna be trying. So, all right, got those little things off. Studs are still intact. Here are the lines. These are gonna go right on here. Now there's no O-rings on here. I don't know how well this is gonna show up, if at all. It has these weird, almost like one piece complete ring on there. It's not really an O-ring. So hopefully it'll seal all right. Um, I've got the hardware here somewhere. Oh, it's the nuts. Okay, never mind. I'm not completely losing it. We'll just get these started. And I'm finding a lot of things on this Dodge Shadow that is kind of a weird. A lot of the hardware is a mix of standard and metric. So it's kind of a pain. I don't know if you can see the front of the car here. But there's, I uh, can't me pan down. Just a bunch of different hardware there. Some of it's metric, some of it's standard, but yeah. It's a lot of back and forth trips to the toolbox. Probably took more time than actually removing this stuff took. Just the trips back and forth. But I got those started on there. This will tuck down in here. Got the hardware right here to reattach it to the fender. All right, I gotta tighten down those fittings, which if I remember right, I think they were a half inch. Now that I got the dryer installed, the next step should be to install this retrofit kit for the R12 to R134. You know what that is, it comes with a bunch of different fittings that replace your high side and low side ports. Um, I've already got the low side port on the compressor because what I'm going to do now, normally this is where you would install. So like on this car, the high side port is right here and this would screw on there. This one, I have the Schrader valve out right now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my ester oil. Now, supposedly again, like I said, ester oil and mineral oil, I guess don't hurt each other supposedly. If you use PAG oil, I guess the mineral oil can cause the PAG oil to gum up and really just kind of like mess up your system. So that's why I'm going to use ester oil. Now, um, I haven't drained the compressor of any oil or anything like that. What I did do, and I did this as an experiment, I added some of this ASEP lubricant enhancer. This is a one ounce bottle. Now this is supposed to just, you know, help with cooling. It helps with you know extending the compressor life, things like that. I've already added this, and I did this as an experiment because what I did 
was I kicked my uh, vacuum pump on, I'm connected to the low side port, and I took this bottle, shoved this in here like a straw, and I just sucked it into the whole system through the high side port. So I added one ounce. I'm going to add probably a couple ounces of ester oil. I'm going to do it the same way. So I'm going to pour an ounce into here just to make it a little bit easier and to show you guys that this does in fact work. It's a little slow, but let me get this poured in there. All right, so what I've got now is I've got about an ounce of ester oil in this ASEP bottle. So what I'm going to do now is kick the vacuum pump on. I'm not worried about any you know, vacuum level or anything like that right now. I'm not looking to, to draw the system all the way down. I'm doing this just to add oil. And if I cover this high pressure port, the, the vacuum builds up. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it. I'll try to put my mic down there. Get a little whistle. So it is creating a vacuum. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put this tube in here. Am I on camera? Yeah. And then I'm gonna just shove this in here and let the vacuum pull the oil through the system. There's so much background noise with the fan and the pump. Maybe you can hear it, but I'm gonna let this run. Maybe the mic will pick up the sound when it gets down near the bottom. All right, sucking fluid in. There you go. That's one ounce. I'll do another ounce probably, and then I'll connect up and draw a vacuum on the system. All right, with the oil in the system, hopefully it should be enough. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this Schrader valve. I think this is the accumulator. Uh, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Leave some comments below if you know what this part is. So there's the Schrader valve. And this is the retrofit fitting. I have a socket here somewhere for it. Got to find my socket. So now we're not, you know, obviously going all gorilla torque on it. There we go. So now I should be able to just go ahead and connect up my um, high side port. All right, once you get the adapter on, it's just a quick lock little collet, pull back put it on the fitting and then give it a tug, make sure it is in fact on there. There we go. I'm gonna open that. That one we know is already open. So next step will be to get the uh, everything else all set up and start drawing a vacuum on the system. All right, I've got the vacuum gauges hooked up. I've got the pump hooked up. I'm gonna make sure this is open. The other low pressure is open on the other end. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pump on. I'm gonna start seeing this vacuum come down, hopefully. We'll start drawing a vacuum. Let that get down as close to 30 as possible. And then we'll let it sit for a while, make sure we can maintain a vacuum. It's drawn down slowly. Few minutes later. Right, we're down to uh, 28, 27 and a half or so. We'll let that get all the way down, and then we'll just let it sit and make sure it maintains a vacuum. All right, so the system's been sitting here for about half an hour. Vacuum gauge hasn't moved, so I think we're ready to start charging. I've got a can of coolant hooked up, ready to go. I'm going to start the car, fire up the AC system. The AC system. Now, the compressor is probably going to make noise. This thing has made noise before, so I don't even know if this compressor is good. It should be, but... We'll find out. It might get kind of obnoxious though. A little bit of a squeaky belt. All right, so I got the AC on. I'm gonna crack this thing, actually. Now we're gonna open the low pressure side. I got the coolant bottle open. There we go. Oh, and we're flowing. Both pressures came up, so I guess means it's good. I did get three cans, um, so that's 36 ounces. Um, for this car, I forget, let me look it up. All right, so I guess it looks like it should be about 32 ounces when it was running R12. Um, but I guess we'll run 
So three cans of this would be 36. We're not going to run three full cans, 24. So I think we want to be about 28 ounces um, because you don't want to full. You don't want to run it up to full capacity of R12 versus R134. You want to run converting to R34 about 80% of the capacity of R12. So if we're looking at you know 32 ounces, 32 times let's say 0.8. It'll be 25 and 25 and a half ounces or so. So I had a bit of an issue yesterday. Um, I'm vacuuming the system down again. I had to replace one of the uh, AC lines. And it was this one right here. Um, the Schrader valve that's in here got damaged, I think with the adapter fitting that, that I put on there. Something happened. It stopped taking a charge for some reason. And then I was messing with it and ended up finding that Schrader valve was damaged. The only way to replace it, you can't replace just this canister, it's all part of this the one hose. So it goes to the compressor, it goes to the condenser, and it goes over here to the dryer. So went to the pickup part this morning and got a replacement one of that. It's in there, so everything seems to be working good. Drawing the vacuum down again, I'm just finishing this up. So next will be to start adding coolant or refrigerant. Again, fan blowing, hopefully you guys can hear me. I've got the line adapter or the can adapter hooked up to my yellow line. I'm going to connect this to the can. Now what I've done is I've gone in and I've written on each can the total weight of the can. And that way I'll know, I'll weigh the can afterwards. That way I'll know exactly how much I've put in. So hopefully these cans now, these are the same cans I was using yesterday. So obviously it didn't take in all that much. So hopefully... These cans are still good and there's not, they didn't like lose pressure or anything, but it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's puncturing the cans at all. I don't know. So all right, that should be, I'm going to try to crack this line and get any air out of it. See, it doesn't, the cans to me don't seem like they're, they're doing anything. Let me try the completely full can that I know I haven't messed with. These self-sealing cans. I'm not a fan of these things. Like it never makes a sound like it's puncturing the can. There's no pressure coming out of the line either. I don't even know if this is going to work. Something's going on. Something's not right. I'm still holding a vacuum, so it's not like it's... Okay, there we go. It's not like getting the air out. There we go. And then it's, but then it stops. So the pressure shot up for a second, and then it just stops. I have defective cans or something. Three of All three of them are doing this. I don't know guys, I'm gonna investigate some more. All right, so you can see the pressures are up, hopefully. The compressor's running. You see the, the compressor clutch is actually engaged and it's running. It's this fitting, you have to kind of like finagle it. I, if I tighten it down all the way, it doesn't work. I have to have it like sort of cracked. It's cold, it's flowing. So yeah, it's just, maybe it's just that valve is just touchier, the way it's engaging the can, I don't know. But it's working. So I'm gonna keep filling this thing up. All right, I am on the second can. Um, I did have a slight leak right down. I was gonna show up the block that goes into the condenser, I guess. I saw some oil there. Um, so I tightened that down. I didn't notice, like I said, there was no leak when I was doing the pressure test, but I guess, or the vacuum test. But uh, you see, maybe, I don't know if you can see, there's a spot of oil on the ground there. There's a little bit up inside the the bracket inside the cross member but pressures are up and you know of course come over here check the air the air is definitely uh starting to cool off so we are cooling compressors are running i don't see any other evidence of leaks anywhere i've been looking around just that one i'm gonna keep an eye on that one right like i said it's right down inside there i'm not sure 
I'm on a GoPro, so the screen's small. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it's working. It's filling up. Keep on going. Okay, I'm two cans in. This one I started off, it was 13.8 ounces. When I finished, it was 4.2 for a total of 9.6. And this one, when I got done, I weighed it, it was 4.2 ounces for a total of 11 ounces. So that gives me a total of 20.6. I think I want to take it to what, 25-ish, I think is what I said. So on the third can, I'm going to I have a scale right here. I'm going to try to balance the scale somewhere where I can have the can on it right there. So that should be, now this is 14.6. It was 14.9 when I weighed it. So I don't know. Maybe it's just the scale is off. Yep. Zero ice of scale. 14.8. So I'll start pulling from this can and I'll run it down till about another, I don't know, let's say 20.6, about another five ounces. So I'll run it down until it's about nine and a half ounces or so. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully the system will be fully charged. There you can see it's slowly dropping in weight. Maybe I can get a good angle on the screen. There we go. It's slowly dropping. Like I said, these valves, this, this one in particular is like super touchy. I've got to get it just right for it to work. So I have to mess with it and then put it back on the scale, mess with it. So yeah, at least I'm going to take it down about nine and a half ounces and then we should be good. All right, so the manual calls thir for 33 to 34 ounces of refrigerant, but that was on R12. So with R34, you want to run about 80% of that, which so 32 times 0.8. About 25.6 ounces is what I should have put in. I did over service it a little bit. So I put in 7.9 plus 9.6 plus 11 equals 28.5. So yeah, over service it just a little bit, but we come around into the car here, we're onto the driver's side. And this thing is blowing out some nice cold air. I wish I had one of those little invent thermometer things, but the engine temp is still sitting nice and cool. This thing is running really nice, guys. Really nice. So doing this conversion so far anyway, didn't uh, grenade the compressor. Uh, I think I've got the oil leak all, or the leak, all figured out there's hasn't been any more oil down in there i got the valves closed pressures are looking good from as far as i can tell anyway i may be wrong i don't know if the high side's a little high maybe i mean it's like 90 something degrees out here so there's the low side but yeah i have no idea what i'm doing here so you guys let me know do those look good or not yeah that's really about it guys i mean it really wasn't that complicated if that schrader valve hadn't gotten damaged I don't know if it was just the fitting that I put on there damaged the straighter valve or just all the frustration. And that stupid cap for that self-sealing can, that thing is junk. Um, I'm going to see about replacing that. I don't know why it was so finicky. I had to get it dialed in just right. I kept having to shake the can um, just to keep it flowing. I don't I don't like that cap at all or that, that fitting. But it worked. Appreciate you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe. Hit the bell. See you on the next one.